So with Park and Rec, what was the, obviously you have the Tampa location, went into COVID. What was the, what was your thought when everything happened with COVID? Cause obviously you got a couple restaurants now, you're a little yeah. more established and it is not- Crazy time, bro. Um, you know, got, so Park and Rec St. Pete was almost three years old. Opened up Park and Rec Tampa a couple months before COVID hit and crazy time. I actually lost my dad a week after I opened Park and Rec Tampa unexpectedly. Oh so yeah, it was, um, yeah, really a crazy time in my life. Yeah. Um, but you know, I know like I was presented what I you like, you deal with, you deal with the cards you're dealt, right? Yeah. And so, you know, losing my dad was, was still awful three years later. And, yeah. um, one of those things that, uh, I know what he would tell me though, yeah. right? Like you got to go handle your business, yeah. you know, as much as I wanted to grieve and, and I still am dealing with it three years later, like it's huge impact, but, um, I had a week old business yeah. and I didn't have the luxury of, you know, a pity party. I, yeah. I, you know, took a couple of days and, you know, tried to, be there for my mom, my brother, and myself, yeah. and, and plan a funeral and all these things, and it was crazy. But like I had to, I had to dive into my business. It was a week old. I, I had to do it. Um, and so then COVID hit, and it's like, you know, who whole another, yeah, yeah, whole another whirlwind. Something I, you, none of us, absolutely, like, dude, who's ever dealt with that before? Yeah, right. Like I just dealt with. A personal thing. A personal it's, loss, and now I'm facing a, a, a business and- Catastrophe. Yeah, man, I mean, like, my monthly rents are not cheap, you know, <laughs> especially now with seven places. Yeah. But even back then with a brand new business, we were three months old, I just built this place for a year. Yeah. I didn't have the, the cash. The reserves to like- Yeah, to like, I was, I was fucked. I mean, yeah. You know, sorry, <laughs> but like, I was like, what the F am I going to do? Like, yeah. it was very, very scary. And, um, thankfully, you know, we came out of that. We were able to reopen. Yeah. We were able to move forward. Um, you know, I've, I've been very thankful for a lot of the people who, you know, were, were wanting to get back to work, yeah. staff, of course. um, customers wanting to come out, yeah. you know, such an unknown time. Right, like you know, we got staff in masks, and yeah, yeah. I mean, what a fucking weird. Like, I can't wait to see a documentary on all that shit. Yeah, because like it was a weird time in history. Like, Absolutely. you're going to a restaurant, and people are wearing a mask, and your table's six feet away from you. Like, did we just do that? You know? Yeah. Like, dude. Like, I think when you're in it, you just right. We always. Yeah, we course. move forward and we make the best out of every situation. But like now looking back, like that was simulation. <laughs> like, whoa, we just were doing all of that. It was weird. Yeah. What a weird time. Uh, but you know, we made, we made the best of it. We all pushed forward and thankfully, you know, we're, we're able to operate and, you know, thank God for, for, for being able to do that. Yeah. You know, um, it was, it was a scary time in hospitality and, um, we were faced with fines and, you know, uh, limitations and all yeah. these different things. But, you know, um, you know, when I opened up Park and Rec Tampa, it was a dream of mine because my dream originally started in Tampa, right? Like yeah. I wanted, before I came to the, to St. Pete and opened the Avenue, yeah. I wanted to open a place in Tampa. Yeah. I grew up in Tampa, <laughs> you know, I was born in Buffalo and grew up in Tampa. And so like my network was in Tampa. Right. All my friends are in Tampa that I grew up with. And so like, I always wanted us all to have our own hangout spot. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and being in the industry, like I've always wanted to be able to like my, my, my best friends are here and yeah. you know, we're, we're cheersing at my place and yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So when I was able to have success at park and rec St. Pete, yeah. I felt like that was the right concept to bring to Tampa, yeah. you know, rewinding back in the day my goal was to open up avenue in tampa oh, and, really? and even good fortune prior to that in oh, tampa wow. and for me when i opened the avenue in st pete and i moved to st pete i wanted a year later to open avenue tampa okay and have an operating partner or a general manager or somebody yeah. run the same people i didn't want to live in st pete 
Really? I didn't know shit about St. Pete. Yeah. Like I told you, I didn't spend a lot of time in St. Pete as a kid. Yeah. I grew up in Tampa. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I still um, think about that often. Like, I moved to St. Pete thinking it was going to be how I got started. Yeah. And now I don't ever want to leave St. Pete. Yeah. I love St. Pete. It, you know, I love, I love this city um, in every way. You know, it's, you know, the beach is close. Downtown's booming and cool yeah. and there's plenty to do and there's culture and there's restaurants and there's concerts and there's so much to do um and then if you want to get away the beach is is right there yeah you know and so I, I love i love that we have like the best of both worlds especially for a city in florida right like a lot of cities in florida are like little tiny beach towns yeah you know or then you have like miami that's like las vegas <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. it's different yeah absolutely so. i mean that's one of the best things and that might have been one of your best uh like luckiest things that happen or like yeah the strokes luck because yeah. gotta have some luck see you make your luck though right like you have you, to. you have to right situations come up and i've had that happen um even for me like i got the park and rec st pete location yeah because the guy that owned that property at the time which he doesn't anymore but he was my next door neighbor landlord right yeah. so i had the avenue doing well and he used to come over maybe once, twice a week and get a bite to eat and listen to a little live music. And I'd always stop by the table, hey, how are you? And the business went out next door to me and he's like, I know you run a good business. I come into your business. Like, are you interested in taking this space? So like, I made my own luck because I was doing the right thing. I was working hard. I was creating opportunity, opportunity, but also by treating someone right. Yeah. And, 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 establishing a relationship with them um on a on a, on a ground level like yeah. just that i didn't know that he owned the building until we got to know each other more and he's yeah. like yeah i happen to be the guy that owns the building next door to you and you know my tenant is going out of business like would you be interested so you know <laughs> opportunities come because you're doing the right thing yeah and i, I think you brought up a point that was really good you're like even if you're a waiter or your staff or you're the cook or you're any position, you might get bored because it's going to feel very repetitive. You brought up brown today. And, but the boredom is really where you can excel because that shows that you're consistent in what your actions are. And like, if you didn't show up every day at the Avenue being like, right. I'm bringing it. Why can't someone else who comes in for half the shift bring it as much as I'm bringing it for, I, I know as the owner, you're doing a lot more. And it's funny you touch on that as well because I always, when I used to, and I still tell our managers, I always feel like there's a sweet spot in, in like a shift, yeah. right? For like each person, yeah. right? Like most servers don't want to work 12 hour days, yeah. right? Like they don't. Yeah. That's not fun, right? Yeah. Like if they can work like eight, six to eight, yeah, it's a good sweet spot. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to make good money and they're not burnt out. Yeah. And then the guest sees that, yeah. right? Like if the guest sees that, then it's going to affect the business. So um, a lot of that is, is something we think about too, is like, you don't want people to, you know, feel uh, burnt out. You don't want people to, you know, uh, not enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. And it, because it, it does get repetitive. Oh, absolutely. So for you, you bring uh, Park and Rec to Tampa, yeah. second location. Did you have the thought of pushing this out? I did. That's that was that was another thing. Like obviously, my dream was to open my own place in Tampa. Yeah. But then um, there was some thought of like, is this going to be uh, the one that I do? You know, is this yeah. like a big picture thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, it crossed my mind a lot back then. Yeah. Uh, like 2018, 2019. Okay. Um, and then. You know, 2020 happened, right? So, uh, kind of derailed that. Yeah. Um, and also for me, I don't know if I can do the same thing okay. like very often. Yeah. And even though like the day to day is that. Yeah. Um, building out something is very exciting okay. when it's new. Yeah. Right. Like. Doing Park and Rec once was awesome. Yeah. Doing it twice was really cool, but not as exciting as going and doing Dirty Laundry. 
right? Like it just wasn't because yeah. you're creating something you're ground cool. level, brand new. Doing this and doing this and doing this, like if I were to like, like I would never want to own, you know, 10 Applebee's. Like, yeah. That's not me. Yeah. Because they're all pretty much the same. And don't get me wrong, there's probably some operational, like, um, advancements. It, like, it, you know, it would make things easier, right? Of like, course. Like, okay, same menu, same yes. menu, same menu. Operationally, there's some, some great, uh, positives to that but um creatively it's boring yeah and like i i just don't think that's me i you know that, that, that was tough and like park and rec tampa and park and rec st pete as much as i try to make them the same they do have their own lanes because the buildings aren't oh, exactly the different. same right yeah. like the, the buildings aren't the same and like the the, the, the the location's not the same so like if i were to do park and rec you know in another market a third one um, obviously it would be different because no two buildings are the same yeah. um, and no cities are the same and locations are the same but um, I don't know if that's really something I really want to explore anymore yeah. you know um, I had those plans and thoughts um, and, and that was something that I um, was really like um, interested in and excited about and I had some really cool meetings. I'm not going to say with who, yeah. um, but a really big company yeah. and um, COVID kind of derailed that and changed a lot of that. So um, when I was looking at, you know, I had just opened Tampa, I had some really, really cool meetings um, with, with a, one of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. And um, you know, COVID kind of changed all that. So, well, um, well, yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I would, I would entertain it, Yeah. but it's not something I'm like seeking, Got right? It. Like I'm not going out soliciting it anymore. I've had people from other markets reach out to me. Like I love to park and wreck in, you know, this market or that city yeah. or whatever. And if, you know, it's, it's something I'd entertain. I personally don't want to operate them. Yeah. Like I wouldn't want to operate a park and wreck in, you know, Dallas, Texas, like I don't have the bandwidth for that. Yeah. You know, I'm so busy in St. Pete, Tampa already that like, I know like I'm out of, I'm out of good place. Like yeah. where like uh, my plate's full. Yeah. And I think, um, it's kind of a blessing that all that happened because you're very self-aware in what you actually enjoy. And it seems like you really enjoy that creative process. And I yeah. see you, what you light up when you're like, <laughs> this restaurant had to happen. Like, it's not me. It, it, I'm sitting on it, I'm chomping at the bit, I gotta get this yeah. thing out there. It's not, and that's kind of my, where my next question comes in. With COVID, a lot of people are receiving and you are, the Hunger Thirst Group is ex, like doing very, very well. And I know the same Pete people are very grateful for that because you got dirty laundry. I'm grateful for the same Pete people. You know, without them, we don't have any cool places that I'm able to do, you know, we, we I think, Again, going back to, like I said, I think, you know, when I moved here 11 years ago, I saw this city as a, you know, city on the rise and, yeah. and a city that was going to grow. I did not think it would grow to what it is. Yeah. I, I'll say that. Like, if someone 11 years ago was like, you know, there's going to be high rises booming everywhere now yeah. and, you know, all this kind of shit, I would have, I would have been like, nah, nah, like, yeah. maybe in 20 years, but not as, as, as quick as, as, it's quick as it has been. But um, there's, it's a very desirable city, like Absolutely. I was saying. I know why I love it. I love it because the beach is 10 minutes away. I love it that downtown is not boring yeah. and, 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 and that it's safe, yeah. right? Like that was another thing we were talking about earlier. Like downtown's walkable, it's safe. Um, you've got great, you know, places to go for dining and drinking and dancing. And, you know, you've got great venues that, that put on shows, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, stadiums or, or, or theaters or whatever it may be. So I think we have a lot of, um, what people are looking for. Yeah. And also a lot of what I wanted back then was like, I love being able to walk on the weekends, right? Like yeah. you park the car, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a drive to the office guy anymore, yeah. but like that was something that I thought about 10, 11, 12, 15 years ago. Like, on the weekend, you want to walk to your neighborhood bar. Absolutely. You want to, like, you want, one, being in the industry, 
you know, drinking, driving. I, I don't no, get no. on that. So like, I always want, and I've never been like a big drinker, but like, I love that you can like do the live, work, play type of thing. Yes. And like, that's what a city is, yeah. right? Like it's that New York lifestyle yeah. without being in New York in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't like cold. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what, what allowed you to have those, those next couple of restaurants? Cause we've got dirty laundry. Yeah. Good fortune, and then the newest of all is yeah. Lost in Town, right? Yeah. Um, you know, talking with you earlier, you know, you guys, I told you, I, I got a few others that are in the books. <laughs> things I hope to do one day, and yeah. you know, there's been things that I've shelved before, and you know, I've got a concept I thought about the other day that I created like seven years ago that I've never done it. Maybe one day I do. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm big on um, right place, right time. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to put like a square in a circle. Um, you know, lost and found the concept I came up with because I thought about putting it somewhere else two years ago yeah. and that deal didn't work out and then I had it and I'm like, okay, maybe one day I do it, maybe I don't. Yeah. But then when that opportunity came for where I put lost and found, um, at first I was a little standoffish because one, I had just opened Good Fortune yeah. and lost and found financially for me was a stretch yeah. and I was like, man, I, I, you know, I'm going to have to do this, you know, I'm coming out of my pocket. It's a lot of money. You know, I just opened a place yeah. but I really did believe in the location and the concept. Um, and when I created the lost and found concept, I wrote it and I, I almost, I don't think I've ever come up with a concept that didn't have food attached to it yeah. like as part of the brand. And I'm big on, you know, it being full service. Yeah. And for me, this space didn't have room for a kitchen. And I kept trying to figure that out. And I was thinking about doing just a cold kitchen. So yeah. like sandwiches. Okay. Um, but then again, if I give up the real estate for a kitchen, could that be an area where it's better suited for guests to, you know, like I was looking at part of the space and I'm like, if I built a kitchen, you know, then I got to, go through this wall, yeah. you know, it's going to delay opening. Um, are we really going to sell this much food? And so, yeah, it kind of was one of those things. And then I decided that I was going to buy a food truck. Okay. And that's where the food truck idea really started. Um, but, um, I was looking at, okay, I have this menu I want to do. Yeah. I'll buy a food truck. Yeah. And with everything that's gone on in the last few years with how, crazy labor and food costs are, it really became one of those things that like, do I really want another kitchen? Okay. In the sense of like, food costs, yeah. labor. Of course. What if this person doesn't show up to work? Cause we deal with that. All the time. It's, yeah, it's scary and frustrating. Like I've had locations where like, thank God it hasn't been very often, but like where the kitchen was closed that day. Cause, yeah. cause we only have one cook and the person's sick yeah. or quits. Yeah. So like it sucks being handcuffed, but like when your operations are only allowing you to have minimal staff, yeah. um, you have to have good people that are reliable and you know, we're at the mercy of them. Yeah. And so I didn't really want to do that again. Yeah. Right. I already have that with everything else. Everywhere else. And good fortune is a large production. Yeah. You know, I mean it's my biggest restaurant. You know, we've got sushi chefs, we've got, you know, uh, prep kitchen, we've got, you know, our, 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 our line, uh, where we've got several cooks on the line. Um, and you know, we've got, you know, full service. Um, and so there's a lot of moving parts and, and after doing that, I was like, I think I want to pump the brakes. I just want to do a bar. Yeah. And, um, with doing that, you know, the food truck idea was like, there's so many cool food trucks. You know, let's, yeah. let's, let's connect with them, collaborate. They might have a following that comes to the bar Fantastic. and we've seen that so far, right? Like some of these food trucks, people follow them to their events, right? Like, Oh, we, we had this yeah. hot dog food truck that brought like 30 friends of theirs. <laughs> it was like, that's awesome. Right? Like you follow that food truck. So that's one of the biggest things that I think you do very well and you think about it in different ways where you're like, I can mitigate risk here yeah. while also bringing in another, I can, we can rise up each other. And I think that's one of the biggest things where you're like, 
yeah, the food truck, they might come on just Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Maybe they got a weekly spot. Maybe they just- Yeah, we're starting to kind of find which ones do well, which ones are good fits, who's got availability, but it's another network. And yeah. like, and it's also a great way to collab. Yeah. And like they're part of the community. They're Absolutely. part of the industry. They're part of hospitality. You know, I hope that, um, you know, for my neighbors, it's not impacting them, right? Like. We, we don't have that many restaurants near us anyways. So, you know, we, we really only have one. And so, you know, we've been eating over there a lot. So, uh, but like we have our food trucks at night, yeah. um, predominantly, and it's really just a way to keep the people in our building being able to get something to eat. It's yeah. three hours. It's not like we're, um, hurting our neighbor. Yeah. Um, it's really just a way to keep the lost and found guests knowing that they can eat. Right? Yeah. Like I, it's, it's just a small piece of why you might come to us, right? Like, you know, okay, we're going to go out for drinks. They always have different food trucks. Let's see what they have today. Right. Yeah. Like you're it's a variety. Right. And the cool thing is a lot of people, as you know, like we all go out and if you're, you know, you're going somewhere, but like maybe three of your friends haven't eaten. Like, well, dude, they have food trucks. Yeah. Right. Fine. Cool. Right now, your friend doesn't go. Oh, we're going to a restaurant. We don't want to go there, yeah. or we will meet you there later. And now the whole group goes to that restaurant. So for me, it was like it's it's an offering that is just kind of that icing on the cake. It's not it's not going to make or break us. It's yeah, and it's so good to have a win win scenario in yeah. most of these situations because yeah. it rises them up, but it also doesn't deter from you. And and I love how you have so many different perspectives you see from you're like. We have the employees, we have the guests, we have the neighbors. I, no one even thinks about the neighbors. And it's like- I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a lot of perspectives. Yeah. Um, and I would say like, what, what do you think one of the things that got you from one location to seven now at this point? Like, what do you think was some of the biggest things that allowed you to make that jump and that leap? Because that's a lot, like there's yeah. a lot of restaurant tours who I know, oh, they just sit at two or they sit at yeah. three or one or what? what What's allowing you to grow? Like, what is it? I think having good people, you know, um, we're, we're, I'm big on developing people. Yeah. Um, I wish I could hold good people longer, yeah. right? Like I'd love to keep growing them. And you know, that's my goal, especially as the older I get, I, I, I don't want to do, you know, yeah. 15 to 20 hour days all the time. I want to, you know, be able to keep things a little bit more at arm's length. But, yeah. um, I think that a lot of what we do is, um, you know, the creative side, yeah. right? Like it, I want my places all to be different from each other. Yeah. Um, but also bringing something fresh to yeah. the market we're in. And, um, that's, that's why like, you know, I've got a couple other ideas and, you know, I'd like to see them, them happen, but you know, I'm also very content. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for where I'm currently at and, yeah. and, um, I don't want to, um, feel like we have to do any more because yeah. we don't. And it's not an arrogance thing. It's a, there's plenty of work every day. Yeah. We got plenty on our plate. Operations are always, yeah. you know, there's always operational headaches. Yeah. And so there's always room for improvement. Absolutely. Um, but the creative side is fun and, and um, bringing more um, unique experiences to the city is, is something I, I love. Um, and, and for me, you know, that jump from one place to seven has been a lot. Yeah. And it was something that I don't think I ever planned on. Um, like I said, I always wanted my own place. And, you know, maybe as I've gotten older, um, the creative side has kind of been something that um, I, I kind of have, you know, the knack for and, and, and the, 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 um, kind of feel like I, I know what our city is missing or, yeah. you know, this could be cool, but I also let like a space speak to me. Like I, again, going back to that, like, I don't want to put a square in a circle. So like, I've always kind of tried to let like, okay, like I can see this concept there. And like, you know, for me, like I said, like lost and found is I, you know, was, was, creating that because I felt like it might be somewhere else that I could put it. Yeah. And um, so I almost didn't put it here because of the kitchen thing. Yeah. But then I, I just had to keep, 
you know, spinning my wheels every night and think about that more. Um, I can't let that deter this concept because it is a small portion of what we're doing. Yeah. Right. Like food isn't the driving force, mm -hmm. um, but it, it can make you more well-rounded. And mm -hmm. I, I'm a big believer in that because I really do enjoy a bar that has food. Yeah. Right. Like restaurants, awesome, but there's something about going to a bar, having a good time and knowing you can still eat. Yeah. Right. And so I, I love that. That's, that's more of who I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, we've had some, some great opportunity because of the city we're in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the coolest things is, is that you keep innovating and you keep realizing that, Hey, this might be the place, this might not be the place. And it's not always, the you let the space come to you but you have the separate ideas because you're like we, we can't force anything and that ability i almost didn't do park and rec where it is because i didn't know if i could facilitate i didn't know if my concept was going to fit that layout in space oh wow. and, and like i felt um you know the park and rec concept originally for me i had some other gaming elements to it and you know, again, I had to figure it out. I mean, originally where I did giant bucket ball, I was going to do yeah. putt putt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then I started thinking more about putt putt with the drinking and I don't know if I really want people, you know, playing putt putt when they're kind of partying a little bit. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Saw the giant bucket ball in Vegas. There's a place out there doing it. I'm like, it's, it's really cool. And I was glad to bring that to St. Pete, you know, um, because you know, nobody was doing it in the same Pete and, you know, now I see it kind of in our market, you know, I see a place in Tampa doing it. Absolutely. I see a place in St. Pete doing it. Absolutely. It's cool. We were first. So I guess I'll, it doesn't matter to me though, yeah. right? Like it's a cool game. It, Go. I didn't invent it. I, I didn't, I'm not the inventor of giant bucket pong, like at the end of the day. And if you are the inventor of giant bucket pong, you want everybody playing it. So like, who gives a shit? And like, uh, that's the thing too. Like I didn't invent the cheeseburger. Yeah. Like, no, but you, you know, you, you had a little iteration on it, yeah. but I definitely appreciate you sharing the creative side in this. Cause I've interviewed a couple different restaurants yeah. orders, and like you, you, not everyone shares that element of like that creativity and that flowingness that you don't think of that when you think of a restaurant owner. So it's awesome to see. Thanks. Now, Steven, where can people find you? Where can they reach out to you? Physically. <laughs> they might not find you. They'll find the restaurants. I'll be in one of my places, I'm sure. That's funny though. I do get those texts like, hey, I'm at your place. I'm like, which one? <laughs> and it's weird, you know, like, which one are you at? You know, because people like, you know, do do hit you up and ask you where you are and all uh, those things. But imagine. yeah, I get those. But um as long as they're coming that's a good thing right absolutely so i'm on i'm on instagram personally um yeah. i think i think it's just steven s-t-e-p-h-e-n dot h-t-g for hunger thirst group yeah. and then obviously each business has their own handle um you can find them all at hunger thirst group um so i go on that instagram and then they're all they're all listed absolutely and if you haven't been to any of these restaurants you have to go check them out because steven is changing the game Thanks. he's putting st pete <laughs> on the map and he's really making a big difference so i appreciate you thank you same thanks for having me on bro awesome thanks <laughs>